This portable projector promises to have it all. Great full HD image, a small size, a lot of unique and smart technologies. But is it good enough? Meet the XGMI MoGo 2 Pro and let's inspect. Have you ever heard of the brand XGMI before? Because if you have, then most certainly you're up to date with what's going on in the industry of portable and regular projectors. If you haven't, then um, it's time to learn something new because this is one of the brands which are pushing the development of projectors to the limits. And today I'm here to present to you something which is called the MoGo 2 Pro, the latest and greatest from XGMI. And having such specs which are promising this to be one of the best portable projectors out there, especially given the price point. And in this video, I like to unbox, I like to set it up, to put it under some serious load and we want to find out together whether that really is as good as it is supposed to be. First and foremost, we're going to cover the price because unlike what ads and marketing tricks try to overwhelm you with, spending the right budget is in my opinion a key factor. It looks like the price is indeed among the main strengths of the MoGo 2 series. The Pro model is launched at just 549 euro or dollars with a discount code, and you're gonna find it in the video description area. Expected retail price is around 599. That's less than alternatives from Anker Nebula, Samsung, and many others. All of that with some specs and features that are going to make you very excited about what's coming. From the preliminary assessment of what we can see in terms of projected quality, looks like we're gonna have a lot of fun. Unboxing comes first and before I go any further, just notice the extra layer of cardboard and bubble wrap before we take the retail box. It's the right way to deliver products to customers, just safe enough. On the box we can read about some of the specs, Android TV, two 8 watt speakers and other goodies. I was surprised by the first piece of information showing up about Netflix installation. Sounds like there's no proper integration yet. Here's the MoGo 2 Pro projector. Size is about right to be called portable, but nowhere near the scale of Nebula capsule, especially the first generation. Here's the power adapter with up to 65 watts power delivery. There's a user guide, of course, and the remote. I did immediately notice the somewhat loose buttons. This noise is a bit alarming. There have been no issues when actually using it. Now, design-wise, being a projector, this device is going to produce a lot of heat. Combined with the integrated speakers, you already have reasonable explanation why it is surrounded by this cooling mesh. It guarantees proper airflow and will avoid overheating. At the bottom, there is this so important quarter-inch mount thread allows placement on most tripods and similar mounting systems. Sure, you can have it attached to the ceiling upside down as well. On the front, the projecting optics is visible. There also is the TOF autofocus and the sensor for auto keystone correction. The internals and the specs are also quite interesting. 1080p projected resolution, 400 lumens maximum brightness, intelligent screen adaptation technology 2.0, there's a quad-core processor running at 1.9 GHz, 2 GB RAM, 16 GB storage, out of which around 10 GB are accessible, Mali G31 graphics processor, two 8W speakers, Google Chromecast inbuilt, and Android TV 11 is the operating system. The specs are definitely interesting and I believe we can divide those into two major groups. This as a projecting device, but also this as a computing device because we have Android TV based mini PC embedded. As a projector, 1080p resolution, HDR, fantastic image, very good saturation, crisp, clear, excellent sharpness. I have zero remarks and you can see that the performance when placed side by side with Nebula Capsule 3 laser is remarkable. Speaking of the Nebula device, unfortunately in here we do not count on an inbuilt battery. However, there is a Type-C input port and if you have a well-capable power bank which is delivering 65 watts or more, you can turn it into a totally portable device. In terms of support for the optics, uh, we have auto-focusing system. Down here we have the sensor for keystone correction. Both of them work really well. Adjustments happen almost instantaneously, but if at some point that annoys you, you can of course disable it 
from the settings. There's one more feature which I like really a lot. Uh, there's a map which the projector is checking all the time through the projected surface. And if there's an object which stays in between, it's going to decrease the brightness in order to preserve your eyes. And that's really very thoughtful and a fantastic feature. In terms of a computing device, it also behaves pretty well. Uh, it's not officially announced, but based on what I found out about the CPU, the graphics and the amount of RAM, I believe inside it's powered by the AM Logic S905X3, which is a very capable chipset allowing you to do some lightweight gaming and absolutely perfect for multimedia entertainment. So now with all of these specs out of our way, time to do and talk about the use cases and do some more real life testing. Interface responsiveness as a starter, it's great, no remarks at all, animations look good and the only condition when stuttering may appear is right after exiting an intensive app. No crashes, no issues, no worries. Android TV 11 is not much different to 12 or 13 and I really hope that XJimmy will do good and meaningful updates over time. Lately, some devices are getting Google TV upgrades, which is a revamped Android TV skin, and I hope that it's also a plan of XJimmy's plans related to this projector, because it's the only way to guarantee longevity of the product. Running a slightly older OS version is actually a positive thing, because it allows a bit more customizations and slightly easier installation of non-supported and non-available in Play Store apps. One of the things I almost always do is to connect to my network share and push the apps that I want. Aptoid TV is one of those good favorites, a Google Play alternative which doesn't lock the app access based on device or region. For example, Rio Racing 3 is not officially compatible with this device, but install it from Aptoid and it's so good. Not only that, but it seems to be performing really well. The last few projectors that I've tested were neither supporting it nor capable of running it. And here, it doesn't even stutter. So add a joystick, which given the Bluetooth availability and the USB port is quite easy, and that's for sure going to increase the satisfaction of having this projector. It's important to note that the processing of the signal adds a few more milliseconds to the signal reproduction, so don't consider this to be your primary gaming resource unless you're happy with the latency provided. Lighter games like Beach Buggy Racing work flawlessly, so do other games like the first-person shooters where you may kill some zombies and release the stress without really harming anyone. Good news, even at maximum load, the fan feels really quiet. The multimedia part is also particularly good. From Play Store you can grab your favorite player and enjoy movies, music or whatever you like. Speaking of music, the Harman Kardon tuned audio sounds remarkable and very loud for this size. YouTube playback is of course a strength. You can watch videos in their highest possible resolution, which is of course cropped by the 1080p maximum that the optics can reproduce. Concerning the other streaming services, there's Amazon Prime Video support, there's Widevine L1 certification, usually good for playback of full HD by most streaming services, but there is no inbuilt Netflix. Lately, Netflix are obsessed with locking licensing based on device model, so you have a few alternatives to either use a ported from a smartphone version and to operate easily you're gonna need a mouse or get a TV stick supporting it like the basic Mi TV stick which is doing the job right or stream from your smartphone using the cast function. Yes, it's the next cool inbuilt feature which is traditionally present with Android TV as an operating system. Google Chromecast with the option for display mirroring, casting photos, videos, it's all there. XJimmy have thought about iPhone integration too, so you're all set regardless of your smartphone brand. Last but not least, the remote. It's alright for covering the basics. Voice enabled. And if you want to expand further the functionality, don't forget the presence of the USB port. Besides extra storage, you can connect a keyboard and mouse and other peripherals. And even a wired headset via the 3.5mm jack or even better, large cable connected speakers, although you can do that wirelessly as well via Bluetooth. 
Did I discover any drawbacks? Sure I did. The ISA function works great, but in some dark scenarios it was triggering the echo mode unnecessarily too often, so I had to switch it off. We discussed the Netflix situation, which I hope to see fixed sooner rather than later, the slightly older version of Android TV used, and the lack of a dedicated Bluetooth speaker mode. Final words time! And based on the assessment so far, I'm confident to say that this here is one of the best portable projectors you can buy in 2023. With the fact it's not truly portable up until the point you buy yourself a decent power bank which is capable of delivering 65 watts or more. But even so, let's say you spend another 80, 90, 100 dollars, it's still gonna be better value than what most competitors are going to offer. And it's packed and armed with better features and even the 720p edition which is the non-pro version is totally worth it my personal opinion xjimmy have done remarkably good job with the mogo 2 pro so that's everything about this episode and if you like it and if you learned something new probably you would like to come back for more therefore subscribe to the channel give us a like if you want to ask a question or share your opinion about this device comments are down below as usual, in the video description area, I'm going to place a link to order it. And as usual, it's been such a pleasure to make this episode for you. I'm Michael, can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye!